to preach faith, divine healing, and health. Jesus is our healer. We give him thanksgiving and honor today. Are y'all ready to get your healing today? Are you ready to maintain your health today? By the way, before we start, you can go on my Facebook page, uh, Garen Gatling. That's G-E-R-E-N, and my last name is Gatling, G-A-T-L-I-N-G. Go to my Facebook page, friend me. I always take all friends unless you're one of those crazy women with no clothes on, and you know, then I don't friend you, by the way, to save you some time. But everybody else, I'll friend just about anybody. Uh, and then, oh, you're going to see these. These are some uh, 10 confessions that have been compiled uh, by the Apostle Anthony T. Mays. And I took pictures of them with permission and put them on my Facebook page. Get these things. Keep speaking them. Keep believing them. Keep standing on the Word of God. Use these as a springboard for your daily uh, affirmations and confessions of God's Word. This will affect your health for the good. I'm going to say all of that again, y'all. Please go to my uh, Facebook page, uh, Garen Gatling. My name is not spelled like it sounds. It's actually G E R E. N, and then my last name is Gatling, G-A-T-L-I-N-G. Good uh, good morning. Somebody just said hello on uh, Periscope. And uh, go get these affirmations. They were compiled. There's 10 of them. 10 of them. They're healing uh, confessions. And they came out of the Amplified Bible for your everyday use to help you possess your healing from the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, they all come out of the Bible, obviously, and they will help you. These are for your sp spiritual uh, mental and your physical enrichment and your development. They're powerful, y'all. Use these as a springboard. You're going to find others. After a while, it becomes addictive. You just want to keep feeding upon the Word of God. You're going to find cross-references. You should write them out. Put your name in there. Make the Word of God very, very personal. And this will help uh, affect your health for the good. Okay, so there's 10 confirmations that are on it on my Facebook page, Garen Gatling. Uh, at Facebook. I'm also on Dr. Garen Gatling at Twitter. You can also find me on YouTube. And as you already know, we're already on uh, World Power Gospel Radio, the station reaching beyond the nation. We've been here all week long. This is going to be our uh, first week of uh, five days a week. Is that right, Apostle Mays? So we're going to start preaching the word uh, every day. All right, y'all ready to get your healing? Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, what I, what I like everybody to do, it doesn't matter what you're facing today. You do not have to face it alone. Let's, let's unite our faith uh, and point it towards yes, Jesus. Sir. Let's center it on Jesus and uh, allow him to use his word and his Holy Spirit and this ministry office of the teacher to help us, to help all of us, to uh, help get our health better. Um, if you're sick, that you'll get well, that you'll start amending. Sometimes healing is a process. Sometimes it is instant when there's manifestations of the Holy Ghost. So you can receive your healing instantly. Even as I speak, at the Spirit of God move, He's sovereign. We thank God for the Holy Ghost. But sometimes it's a process, okay? You'll start sensing yourself getting better and better, particularly when you're practicing the Word. God meets his children, each individual believer, on their level of spiritual growth, A, and B, on their level of faith. God's going to meet you where you are. And you can find that all through the Gospels. You remember when Jairus uh, came to Jesus, come lay your hands on my daughter and she shall live. Notice Jesus didn't say, well, why should I have to do that? Don't, didn't you hear about the centurion? He told me to speak the word. Why do I need to come all the way down? Jesus didn't argue with the guy. Same thing with the woman with the issue of blood. She just touched the hem of his garment. She got her healing. Notice Jesus and say, now, Jairus, why don't you do that? But why do I have to go down to your house? Jesus doesn't do that. He meets you at your level of spiritual growth. You ought to write this down. This is powerful. A, he meets you at your level of spiritual growth where you are in your development and your walk with him. And B, on your level of faith. He will meet you right where you are. Let me give you another illustration. You remember when Jesus, let me slow down. Remember when Jesus in the uh, 14th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew went walking on the water and his disciples saw him and they got spooked and said, oh, my God, it's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Jesus said, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter yelled out and said, Lord, if it be thee, bid me to come on the water with thee. What did Jesus say? Come. You notice Peter was the only one that stepped out the boat. <laughs> Jesus didn't reprimand the other ones. Why don't y'all step out of the boat too? Come on. He, no, he meets you at your level of faith, at your level of spiritual development. Okay, he's going to meet you right where you are. Okay, so I want you to relax today. 
He's going to meet you right where you are, okay? And he's going to take you where you need to be. So the key in this program today would be for you, as well as myself, let's unite our faith together. Let's become one body of faith. Glory to God. One unit of faith. We're going to take our faith to Jesus together. If, if faith were like money and you had five cents and another person listening got tw has 20 cents, another person listening has $100 and I have 1000 if we put it all together, that gives us a larger sum. You don't have to go by yourself today is my point. Unite your faith together with mine and with the many of the people that watch, people that watch the replays. There's a lot of views on Periscope, uh, YouTube. All of us put our faith together. People that are listening live all over the world, y'all, okay, in Asia, Russia, Central Asia, Europe, Turkey, Istanbul, all over the place. So release your faith, okay, everybody, release your faith and believe God that as we receive the word, notice I said we, we're going to receive our healing today. As we receive the word, we're going to maintain our health today. As we receive the word, we expect pain to leave our brains, pain to leave our backs, pain to leave our legs, inflammation to dissipate. We expect uh, inflammation to mitigate and ultimately be eliminated. We expect our blood pressure to be normal. Let's expect God to cause our insulin levels to be normal. Our heartbeats to beat with the rhythm of life in the name of Jesus. Let's believe God for our eyes to see better, to our ears to hear better. Glory to God for us to breathe better. Anybody having respiratory problems today? Let's believe God for the miraculous. Let's put pressure on the covenant. Not on God. You can't pressure God. <laughs> he is God. Hallelujah. But we can pressure on that covenant. Okay, we're going to put pressure on the blood covenant of Jesus Christ. Are y'all ready? Glory to God, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we come to you in that name because Jesus said when he walked the earth, that in that day you shall ask me nothing, but whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Up until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Your word also says in the book of 1 John that this is the confidence that we have in you. That if we ask anything according to your word, you hear us. And if we know that you hear us, then we know that we have the petitions that we desire of you. Holy Father, your word also says that we can boldly approach the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. This is the time of need. We need your healing power to rise up big within us. Glory to God for eternal life to flow out of our reborn spirit, to permeate through every fiber of our being, strengthening our immune system, driving out every tumor, every cancer, every growth, every lesion from our pancreas, our liver, our hearts, our brains our lungs to drive that cancer back in Jesus name drive it out of our breasts for our female uh, listeners today Lord we expect the Holy Spirit of God to drive that law of sin and death out of our bodies in the name of Jesus and we realize this is supernatural Lord so we release our faith in you we're expecting a miraculous we're expecting something to happen we're expecting to receive something glory to God our eyes are upon you. We confess you. Y'all confess this with me. The Lord is my primary care physician. Go ahead and confess that. The Lord is my health care provider. Go ahead and say it, y'all. The Lord is, hallelujah, my healer. The Lord is, hallelujah, my dietitian. Say it, y'all, y'all. The Lord is my physical trainer. The Lord is my cardiologist. Whatever you need, call it out. Glory to God. Jesus is whatever it is you need. He said, I am that I am. What is it you need? He is El Shaddai. He is the almighty God. The mother, the father, the sister, the brother, the breasty one, the provider, the source, whatever it is you need. I am that I am, saith the Lord. Whatever you need him to be, call it out. The Lord is, speak y'all, he's my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord is the strength of my life, I want not for strength. The Lord is, he is, he is, glory to God. Father, your word says, 
Without faith, it's impossible to please you. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We believe that you are. Yes, you're our doctor. You're our healer. You're our physician. You're everything we can need, Father. Be our optometrist. Oh, God, help our eyes today. Be our gastrointernal medicine doctor. Deal with all of our insides, Lord. Our small intestines, our large intestines, get in there, Holy Ghost. Clean it out. Strengthen. Drive out bacteria. Drive out the illness. Remove the tumors and the growths. In Jesus' name, cause, of, cause every major organ system to function in the perfection in which you created the function. Are y'all releasing your faith with me? Please tell me you're releasing your faith. Just trust God, y'all. If you have to, close your eyes. Glory to God. Believe the supernatural. Every minister of God, listen to me. In Jesus' name, amen. That prayer is over. Let's go. Let's go to work. Listen carefully. If you want the miraculous, you have to teach the miraculous. I'm going to say that again. Thank you, Father, for the teaching anointing. I sense it on me. If you want the miraculous, you have to teach the miraculous. I'm not finished. Y'all ready? Keep writing. If you want the miraculous, you must speak the miraculous. You remember what Jesus said to Moses at the Red Sea? When Moses said, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord your God with you. These enemies you see, you're not going to see them anymore. Does anyone remember God's response? You don't hear this preached about a lot. It doesn't take anything from the man of God, Moses. He was an amazing prophet. God bless him forever. But this doesn't take anything from Moses. But did anybody remember God's response? He said, and you can look this up for yourself, Exodus chapter 14. Wherefore... Criest thou to me. Y'all remember that? God said, what are you crying to me for? Anybody remember what else he said? He said, speak and go forward. You go read it for yourself. See, God said, you need to speak. Let me translate that for you, child of God, man of God, woman of God. Listen carefully. Moses, if you want the miraculous, I need you to speak the miraculous. I need you to go forward. Are you preachers listening to me? If you want the miraculous, you have to speak it, y'all. Luke, pardon me, uh, Mark chapter 16. The Bible says Jesus confirmed the word with signs following. In other words, if they weren't giving him no word, if they weren't speaking, there's nothing to confirm. You have to speak. Don't be afraid to speak it out. I call it out in Jesus' name. Blind eyes opening, even as I teach and preach this word today. Deaf ears opening, even as I teach and preach this word today. Heartbeats being normal, even as I teach and preach today. Heart valves being replaced, even as I teach and preach today. Nerve problems being normal. I sense it in my spirit, y'all. Oh, God, the Holy Ghost is here. Even as I speak, the glory of the Lord will perform this for you today. Yes, Inflammation has to go, even as I teach and preach today, not next week, not next month. I serve a great living God. He just expects me to have the confidence to speak it out. I thought about this last uh, week, and I'll get into the word in a minute. I thought about this last week. You know, it actually takes courage to teach and preach faith and healing. It literally does. That's why, and unfortunately, at least I don't hear it a lot. There could be more men and women that God doing it. I don't know. I know they're out there, particularly in the Midwest and Oklahoma and Texas. Man, those people teach and preach faith like going out of style. Um, but anyway, you know, we need to teach and preach it more. Even in our local churches, we have to teach and preach Christ the healer, y'all. God's people are sick and they need to be healed. And if we don't step up in faith and teach it and preach it and speak it and believe God for miracles, they're not coming. At least not in your midst. The Bible says, desire spiritual gifts. And again, it is written, covet earnestly the best gift. You have to covet, desire, speak out those desires and God will bring them to pass. I expect people to come out of wheelchairs in Jesus name. That's no big thing for God. I don't have to get you out the wheelchair. I'm not El Shaddai. I'm not Jehovah Rapha. He is. He just needs somebody to dare to speak it in Jesus name. You're coming 
off of that hospice in the name of Jesus. You're coming out of respite in the name of Jesus. You're coming out of that bed, that bed in the name of Jesus. Yes, you're coming out, glory to God. You're coming off the medication in the name of Jesus. I declare it. Now, you believe that. Grab hold of it. Now, receive the teaching and receive your healing. And whatever the Spirit of God gives you today, act on it. Do it. Put it into practice. Don't be a one-hit wonder with God. Write that down. If you don't have a pen, say it out of your mouth. I will not be a one-hit wonder with God. Anybody know what a one-hit wonder is? In music, that means you had one hit song. You might have wrote some other song, but only one hit actually made it to the top. And that's all they heard about you. Man, I feel like preaching. Don't be a one hit wonder with God. This is not a hit or miss proposition when it comes to your health. Glory to God. You get before Jesus. We're getting ready to get in the word. Go to Luke chapter 17. You get before Jesus every day. You get right up in his face, respectively, of course. And you let him know, I believe this stuff. I want this to become a reality in my life. That abundant life you talk about, would you please teach me how to walk in this stuff? Folks, you literally have to become a disciple of Christ. Literally. You remember what Jesus said that in the gospel of uh, John chapter 8 to the Jews that believed on him? He said, if you continue in my word, then, somebody say then. What does that mean? It's, it implies sequence, which means if you don't continue in the word, forget about discipleship. It's not going to happen. You, you have to get serious, folks. You have to get down to business with God. Okay? And you get up in his face respectfully. You enter his gates with thanksgiving. You enter his courts with praise. If you have to, get on your face. If you're not physically there yet, then sit in the chair. But you talk to him and you get him involved in your health. And you let him know, I'm serious about this. Glory to God. I'm going to put your word in my mouth. I'm going to get it before my eyes. I'm going to speak it out of my mouth. And I'm going to act as far as I can act. And I expect the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost to come behind me and pick up the slack. Glory to God. And help me where I need help. Instruct me where I need instruction. Correct me where I need correction. But I'm serious about this. Are y'all listening to me? Glory to God. Gospel of Luke chapter 17. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you, Lord Jesus, mighty, wonderful Savior. Look at verse 11. Let's get our healing. Y'all ready? Okay. And it came to pass as Jesus went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Where there are not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God except this stranger. And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. That's our subject. This is part six, y'all. Your faith can make you whole. Before I go anywhere, I want you to go back to verse... 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass as they went, they were what? Cleansed. Look at verse 15. While you're looking at it, say cleansed. And one of them, when they saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Somebody say healed. So we see cleansed, we see healed. Go down to verse 19. Arise, go your way, your faith hath made thee whole. Somebody say whole. I want you to notice three different stages here. Three of them. One was cleansed. The other one was healed. And the other one was 
whole, three specific, get this, y'all, three specific stages, okay? Just like his leprosy was in stages, his wholeness came in stages. Get a revelation of this, okay? We're talking about your faith can make you whole, not just healed. You have to remember, child of God, illness Sickness, disease, infirmities, including drug habits, satanic oppression, even demonic possession. When a person is even depressed or wants to commit suicide or gets off on drugs, opioids, alcoholism, shoots up on heroin, even if it's some type of drug that they smoke, some type of methamphetamine, papin pills, whatever. Okay? When you get involved in that kind of stuff, and you get delivered, remember, listen to me. Well, in other words, when you stop using the drug, when you stop doing whatever it is, or you get healed from the diabetes, or healed from the, from the uh, heart disease, whatever that may be, it actually caused damage along the way. Did you know that? You can't smoke crack for 15 years, stop smoking crack, and think everything is hunky-dory, hallelujah. There was some damage that happened over the years. Yeah. Actually, you were poly addicted, P-O-L-Y, more than one. You think it was just crack. You think it was just opioids. Yeah, you think it was just the pornography you were bound by. I got news for you, honey. There was more than one demon that was loosed on that thing. And, and watch this. There's a process that you must go through, okay? Some things are instant. Don't get me wrong now. Normally, that's when there's a manifestation of the Holy Ghost, gifts of the Spirit, working of miracles, gifts of healings. When that's in manifestation, more than likely it is instant. You're reading the Bible straightway, immediately. That's in the Bible a lot. Y'all have seen that, right? There's other times where there was a process. You remember in John chapter 4, the nobleman's son? The Bible says he began to amend or he got better. Mark chapter 16, lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. That's a process. Some things are instant, some things are not. Okay? Yes, Lord. Go to the Gospel of Mark chapter 9. The Lord wants me to give you scripture since we already jumped out there. Mark chapter 9. Let me give you another scripture. And then I'll come back to that point. Look at verse 17. Actually, let's just read the whole thing. Go to verse 14. Let's take our time. Mark chapter 9. Look at verse 14. And when Jesus came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway, all the people. Yes, Lord, I hear you. The Lord wants me to give you something else. That's fine. And straightway, all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? By the way, let me interject this. Ministers, you don't need to you don't need to try to defend yourself. I watch this on TV. You see certain people try to do you don't have to sir, you don't have to defend yourself. <laughs> Not if God calls you, you don't. Now, if you did now, if you out there on your own, then you're on your own. But if God called you, Jesus will speak up for you, honey. Are you pastors listening? You got all those wayward saints talking mess about you in the church. You don't have to say nothing. Whatever you do, don't get in the pulpit and talk about it. Leave it alone. Jesus will speak up with, for you. He's going to say, what are you questioning with them about? You remember what God did to Miriam when she was bad-mouthing uh, his servant Moses? He said, didn't you fear talking about him? Pastors, you don't need to defend yourselves. Politicians, the, those that are actually called of God, you don't need to defend nothing. Jesus is going to speak up for you, honey. Oh, yes, he will. <laughs> I never try to defend myself. Baby, if anything, I need to pray for you. You're in trouble. The Bible says, touch not God's anointed, do his prophet no harm. The Bible says, pray for those that despise you. You better pray for them. They're in trouble talking against you, a child of God. You better pray for those folk. You don't have to stand up for yourself. Jesus will do it for you. He asked the scribe, what question you with them? I like that. Thank you, Jesus. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son. Notice that the man identified Jesus with the disciples or those apostles that he left down in the bottom when he was in the mountain. He didn't say, I brought them to your disciple. Listen to what he said. I brought them to you. 
See, I brought to thee my son. Okay, so are y'all saints listening? When people bring someone ill to you or mentally uh, vexed or on some type of drug or whatever, and they call you to minister, when they bring him to you, they're bringing him to Jesus. You remember when Jesus said, when I was hungry, you fed me? I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink? When I was sick and shut in, you came and visited me? He said, when you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. Are y'all listening to me? Okay? When people see you, sweetheart, they see Jesus. When they bring that person to you, pastor, they're bringing them to Jesus. You represent the king. The Bible calls you in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 an ambassador for Christ. I don't know about you, but I represent the kingdom. That's why I speak the way that I do. I'm not taking it back either. I'm talking confidently. I'm talking boldly. I do not have to heal you. Jesus does. <laughs> he has to confirm the word. My job is speak it, speak it boldly. Glory to God. He'll back it up. You're coming out that wheelchair today in Jesus' name. Yeah, I said it. Glory to God. Anyway, I brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. And where, wheresoever he takes him, he tears him, he foams, he gnashes with his teeth, he pines away. I spoke to your disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answered and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Okay? And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. He fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. And Jesus asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Since he was a child. Notice that. Underline in your Bible. How long ago has this been, y'all? Since he was a child. How long? Since he was a child. Not last night. It's been with this child for a while. And oftentimes it has cast him into the fire, into the water, to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, how many things? All things <laughs> are possible to him that believes. You need to get out that wheelchair today? All things are possible. You need to come out of hospice? All things are possible. You need to come off of that medication? All things are possible. You need your eyes restored? All things are possible in Jesus' name. You need a new heart? All things are possible. Can you believe God today? All things are possible to him that believes. And straightway, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Now let's get down to my point. When Jesus saw the people came running together, notice this, y'all. He rebuked the foul spirit. If you're taking notes, write this down. Deal with the core issue. See? See, the core issue technically is not the clogged arteries. Core issue, your eating habits, more than likely. Let's deal with the core issue, okay? The core issue you think is diabetes. Core issue, more than likely, I'm not saying it definitely, is, but more than likely, you are a sugar-eating fool. And I say that respectfully. You eat a lot of sugar. Okay? More than likely. Learn, write this down or say it out of your mouth. I must learn to deal with core issues. Okay? You think. You just, I'm just a man. That's why I sleep around with all these women. That's what you think. There's a core issue with yourself. We need to cast the devil out of you. Okay? Let's deal with core issues. Jesus rebuked the foul spirit. Got right to the heart of the matter. He didn't speak to the foaming and the tearing and him wallowing around on the ground. He didn't talk about the fire and the water. He didn't bring that up. He went right to the source. You foul spirit. Come out of him. Glory to God, I charge you to come out of him. And don't you enter into him no more. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead. Why was he as one dead, y'all? Because the spirit did some damage to him. Okay, this is what I was getting at. When you've been on drugs for a long time, or you've been bound by pornography for, for a long time, you can, you can stop pornography for, pornography for day. We still got to get some of that garbage out of your soul. Okay, your mind, your will, your emotions, that stuff still lurking inside of you. All that mess you picked up while you were on the street, Jesus has to clean you up. 
Ephesians 5 calls it the washing of water with the word. I know what I'm talking about. Been there, done that. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. But he was as one dead insomuch that many said he's dead. From a natural standpoint, people looked at the kid and said he's dead. And watch this, y'all. The Bible said the spirit was cast out and came out of him. The spirit was gone, but the boys looked as if he's dead. Are y'all listening to me? You can stop the opioids and still be in a dead situation. You could be like the woman with the issue of blood. The, the, cleanse, the blood flow can stop, but what about all that money you lost? We need to go get that money back, honey. What about all that stuff? What about all the stuff the locusts have eaten? The canker worm, the palmer worm, Joel chapter 2. What about all the stuff we lost along the way when we was out there in our mess? When, when that heart disease caused all them problems, all these bills done piled up now, now that, okay, the sickness is gone. What about all these bills? Well, let's deal with this stuff too, Jesus. Oh, he's going to deal with it. Look at the Bible. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and arose. You remember when I said you have to get in Jesus' face? And I said do it respectively. You're going to let, listen to me carefully, y'all. Please get a revelation. Let Jesus take you by the hand. Write this down if you're taking notes. Jesus has to walk you through some things, y'all. Oh, God. He has to literally walk you through some things. Listen to me carefully. The demons already cast out this boy. Can y'all read? The demon's gone. The Bible says he came out. Look at it. Verse 26. The spirit cried, rent him sore, and came out. But he was still as one that was dead. Jesus had to take him by the hand. Are you listening to me? He can get you off the opioids today, folks. But he still needs to take you by the hand and walk you through some things. He's going to have to give you instruction. Where to go, where not to go. Who to get away from. Are you all listening to me? Jesus has to give you instruction. Folks, listen to me very, very carefully. Jesus has to become your physician. Listen to me, y'all. I didn't say he's your emergency room doctor. That emergency room doctor sees you just for that particular situation, and he's done. But you notice they always refer you back to some specialist. They always they refer you back to your primary care physician. They were just there because of the emergency. Are you getting this? You have to literally let Jesus be your primary care physician, your specialist. You have to let him be your drug counselor. Oh, my God. I need you to be my marriage counselor. I need you to talk to me about my finances, Jesus. I need you to help me fix everything that was broken. I was like a mirror that had fallen off the wall. My life was shattered. Jesus had to put every piece back together again. He had to make me whole. Okay? Are y'all getting this? Allow Jesus to take you by the hand. Walk you through this. Some people get out of prison. And, you know, you're out of prison and then you think that, you know, you're just supposed to walk back into that woman's life or vice versa. And everything's just a hunky door and right back where it was. No, it's not. That's unrealistic. Your prayer should be, Jesus, take me by the hand now. Okay? The marriage situation was dead. It's been dead for seven years. I was in prison resurrect this thing. Take me by the hand. Walk me through this, Jesus. How do I do this humbly? What do I say to her? Should I even move right in? Should I start with a room and let you work me back into this? How about when I get back to the church? Do I automatically become minister so-and-so? No, more than likely he's going to tell you to sit your tail down. Okay? Let Jesus take you by the hand and walk you through that thing. Are y'all getting the revelation today? The goal is to be made whole. Write that down. If you don't have a pen, say it out of your mouth. The goal, G-O-A-L, is to be made whole. I'm going to say that again. Thank you, Father, for the teaching anointing. The goal is to be made whole. Okay? We don't want to just get... Is anybody listening from prison today? You don't just want to get out of prison, honey. <laughs> That's great. I used to be in prison. I know exactly what it feels like to be free, man. Man, you're like a bird just got out of a cage. You're ready to fly. <laughs> you're like a lion that they had caged up for years, and all of a sudden they let you out. 
You know, you're like, you're back in the jungle, baby. You're ready to eat up some lambs or you're ready to chase down a gazelle. You're ready to jump on a giraffe. You're, you're, you know, <laughs> you're ready to go, you know. And so I understand that. But you don't just want to be made free out of prison. You need Jesus. Look, walk me through this. Jesus had to walk me through how to deal with a probation officer, y'all. Because in the past, I didn't want to deal with them. I hated them. I despised them. I did. I thought they were part of that system, part of that makeup, you see. See, and, and Jesus had to walk me through it. No, you sit down, you do what they say. You obey those 10 conditions that you signed when you were in there. You said you're going to obey this, this, and that. You told them, people, you're going to stop drinking. Okay, let's get to work. Yeah, man. You have to let Jesus take you by the hand. Obey laws, the stuff you never used to obey before. Is anybody listening from prison today? Yeah, all that stuff you used to break, you, that has to stop, baby. And you're going to need Jesus to take you by the hand. That's if you want to be made whole. If you want to jump back in that bucket called recidivism and go back to prison, don't ask Jesus for no help. Go do it yourself. But if you really want to be made whole, because that's the goal, Jesus, take me by the hand. Walk me through this thing with the P.O. Walk me through this thing on how to go get my job, life skills, resume. Folks, this is you, Jesus, take me by the hand. You're going to find out he's going to direct you to certain people that's going to help you with that stuff. Okay? You're going to look up. Your life will be back together again. Are y'all listening to me? Jesus took him by the hand. Verse 28. And then when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? I'm going to pause just for a moment. This is great. Remember when I talk about making Jesus your primary care physician? Does anybody ever ask their doctors questions? I ask my doctor questions. I ask stuff. Or if, I, if I want to know something, I, I ask. If I don't, I just try to help me get out of there. But if I have a question, I'm definitely going to ask. I want to know. You know, you're the specialist. Talk to me. You should talk to Jesus. Ask him, you know, about the depression. Why is it? What's, what, what's up with this insomnia? I know what the doctor said. Why am I not sleeping, Lord? You're going to find Jesus saying stuff to you like, baby, you are stressed out. You do too much. You, you're in everybody's business. I don't know who I'm talking to today. You're in everybody's business. You talk on the phone all day about everybody and every issue in everybody else's life. Of course you can't sleep. You don't open the door to every demon in your neighborhood. Dear God, honey, hang up the phone. Turn it off. Matter of fact, lose it on purpose. Just lose the phone. That's part of your problem. You can't get off the internet. Just stop it. You're causing your, and of course you can't sleep. You're driving yourself nuts. You better get Jesus involved and find out what's going on with you. Okay? A lot of people just want to deal with surface stuff. They don't want to deal with no core issues. The text says he spoke to that spirit. That's the first thing he did. He, the Bible does not say he took the boy by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. That's not what it says. It says he spoke to that spirit. He took him by the hand next. Are y'all listening to me? Learn to deal with your issues from the core, inside out. Deal with that stuff, man. Homosexual habits, lesbian habits. Talking about I was born like that. Well, let's say you were born like that. I don't know what your problem is. I'm, I haven't met you. I don't know what your issue is. I know there's a devil loose. We need to deal with that demon. We need to lay hands on you, cast that devil out of you, anoint you with all and get a word in you, get you born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. There's no point playing games with it. I'm not going to counsel you. I'm going to cast that devil out, anoint you with all, Lay hands on you, get you born again, get you filled with the Holy Ghost and give you a Bible <laughs> and say, continue in the word. You stick with this book and teach you how to resist that devil when them thoughts come back because they're coming back. You need to learn how to resist that devil and get him out of here when he comes back and try to put you back into and you're a man and get you back in another man's bed or you're a woman and he's trying to get you back in another woman's bed. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to resist that thought. Cast that thought down because that demon's coming back. You don't like the fact that you're delivered from homosexuality, lesbianism, drug addiction, or whatever it is you were bound by. Yeah, see, that's what you need. You need somebody to talk to that devil. Glory to God. And then take you by the hand. Okay, did you get that? Go back to verse 29. And Jesus said to them, underline these next two words. Are you ready? Get your pen. This kind Thank you, Lord Jesus. Have you ever heard anybody teach or preach on those two words? This kind? Well, you're going to get it today by the grace of God and by the Holy Ghost. 
this kind, okay, comes not out but by fasting and prayer. Or in another translation, another gospel, he said, because of your unbelief, how be it? This kind doesn't come out without uh, prayer and fasting. So there's a certain kind that you need to do more than just the basic stuff. See? Other kind, they were doing it. If you read the gospel, they were casting out devils. They were having no problems till they got to this kind and then found out, uh-oh, something's not working. What's the problem? Well, for one, you're in unbelief, Jesus said. You're faithless. We need to work on your faith. You got to get your faith up to par. And then he went on to say, oh, but however, this particular kind, yeah, Prayer and fasting. You need a consecrated life. You're not going to live just any old kind of way, hunky-dory. We walk with Jesus, so everything's just going to be tiptoe to the tulip. Jesus said, no, you're not. You're going to be live a consecrated, dedicated life. Okay? Because this particular kind is not going for, oh, I go to, I go to such and such church. My bishop is bishop so-and-so. This kind doesn't go for that. No, 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 no. This kind, you're going to put some on him. Okay? You have to cast them out. And when the person looks like they're dead, you're going to have to take them by the hand and walk them through it. Everybody in your church, oh, men of God and women of God, my fellow pastors, you can't deal with everybody the same. That's why God gave you that anointing he put on, a special anointing to counsel and deal with people in your flock. He put that on you for a reason because the people are different. Okay? There's going to be some people, they get born again. They get delivered from nicotine and drugs the same night, man. You ain't have to worry about them. They are on fire for God. Other people, they got born again. You're going to have to be how to walk them through the nicotine habit. I'm talking about born again, spirit-filled folk. You have to walk them through that stuff. Take them by the hand. This kind, y'all getting the revelation? Comes not out but by prayer and fasting. This kind is different, okay? Don't put, don't put a one-size-fit-all deliverance mentality on your flock okay deal with them individually the bible says the lord is my shepherd a shepherd goes to his flock anointing each one with oil checking them for certain type of parasites checking each one of them you go through your sheep deal with them know how to deal with this kind and that kind know how to deal with your flock your people that came out of homosexuality um Flip over to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I have to give you another scripture the Lord gave me to give you. I'll give it to you shortly. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. The Lord's got me dealing with my fellow pastors for a minute. Particularly if you're a young pastor. And you just a ring in your hands like, what in the world am I going to do with Sister Sue? She's something else, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, you thought because she got filled with the Holy Ghost that, it was, oh, that your work was done? Nope. You have to feed that flock. Look at chapter 6, 1 Corinthians. Oh, man. Start at verse 9. <laughs> Are y'all ready? By the way, let me remind you, the Apostle Paul is, talk is talking to church folk. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infinite. Y'all know what uh, infinite means? Uh, infinite. It means uh, uh, a catamite, a boy sexually used by an adult prostitute. You're talking about pedophiles, homosexuals. Listen, now listen to it carefully now. He went on to say, nor abuses of themselves with mankind that covers all that sexual immorality, fornication, illicit sex, oral sex, everything you can think of falls under all of this. Nor thieves, nor that includes robbers, nor covetous, nor drunkards, that includes crackheads, opioid addicts. I'm knocking nobody. I used to be one. I'm just, I'm going to point it out. Let's put the dirt out. Here it is. Nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Y'all look at these next six words. And such were some of you. I want you to know the words past tense. Jesus said, you used to be like that. Are you listening to me? He said, such were some of you. In the church, Yes. You thought all those people in your church with those pretty hats and pretty dresses were just like, they were always like that? No. They used to be homosexuals, crackheads, thieves, robbers, crooked politicians. Yeah, whoremongers, drug, drug, drug dealers. Yeah, sitting right next to you. Used to be. The Bible says, and such were some of you. But you were washed. Oh, God for the blood. You were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. 
Can you get a revelation of that? Such were some of you. How do you deal with a congregation like that? You're looking out on a congregation of 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600,000 people. We have big churches in our area. All these people and all these issues. People got born again. I didn't say they weren't saved. I didn't say they weren't filled with the Holy Ghost. I didn't say they don't tithe. Of course they're doing all that stuff. They take communion and everything. And look at all these issues. You mean to tell me that this man was, was effeminate? He dressed like a woman. He wore women's clothes, women's panties, everything. And then he got born again. What do you expect him to be next week, folks? What do you expect to come to your door next Sunday? I don't care if he does have on regular men's clothes. His hand will probably still be bent and twitching. Are y'all listening to me? So he, you're going to have to help that boy or man. Yes. See, he's, he's, you're going to have to do just like Jesus did. Take him by the hand. The Bible says in the Gospel of Mark that when the people saw that young man, they said he looks like somebody that's dead. People are going to look at so-and-so that just got born again and said, man, he still looks like he's still gay. He still looks like he's still using coke. She still looks like a lesbian. People are going to be, oh, he still looks like, guess what you're going to have to do, Mr. Representative of Jesus? Miss Representative of Jesus? Yeah, I'm talking to all my female and male apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. You're going to have to take that young man, that young woman by the hand. If you want them to be made whole. I didn't say they weren't saved. I said made whole. You're going to have to get some stuff done. Let's work with this. That's why God anointed you. That's why that anointing's upon you. Not to entertain people and to hoop and to holler and just entertain and go home for the week. You got to work, baby. If you think a pastor's an easy job, you got another thing coming. If you think being a pastor is just a bunch of teaching and preaching, baby, you missed the whole thing. <laughs> That's just part of it. You know, baby, the council. <laughs> yeah, I hope I didn't dampen your hope. Some of y'all wanted to be a bit in that pulpit so bad, you're probably changing your mind now. Well, if you are changing your mind, you probably weren't called. Yeah, there has to be a passion for that, a pastor's heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to the Gospel of uh, Luke. Remember, I told you the Lord wanted me to give you another scripture. Go to Luke 9. Thank you, Lord. You know, me and the Holy Ghost never got to my notes. Oh, well. He's the boss. I just work here. Look at Mark chapter 9. Same account. Let's just get, let's look at verse 37. We're going to read into this. Okay, you ready? And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only child. And lo, a spirit takes him, and he suddenly cries out, and it tears him, that he foams again, and bruising him hardly departing from him. I besought your disciples to cast him out, and they couldn't do it. Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring the Son to me. Notice this, y'all. And as he was yet coming... The devil threw him down and tear him. Notice the three steps. Jesus did what? Rebuke the unclean spirit. If you're taking notes, write this down. Always deal with the core issue. Isn't that good news? She's standing in front of you, sitting in front of you, pastors, telling you about all this other stuff. You better be thinking, asking the Holy Ghost, show me the core issue. Let me deal with this thing specifically. What's really going on with this child? Okay, don't listen to all her outward stuff. The man said, oh, he's foaming. Oh, he throws him in the fire. Oh, he throws him in the water. Oh, if you can do anything, help Jesus. Like, look, <laughs> how long ago has this been happening now? Let's get down to business. How long has this been happening? Oh, since he was a child. Okay, so this kind needs to be cast out. I've been praying. I've been fasting. I'm not in unbelief. Come out of him in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Deal with the core issue. Number two. And heal the child. That's my point. What did he do? He cast the demon out. Then he healed the child. You could be taken off of opioids, off of crack cocaine, delivered from homosexuality. We still need to heal you. Yeah, you've been walking around wearing women's clothes for 10 years and now you got born again. Baby, we need to, we need to do something with that twitch in your hand now. We got to change a lot of stuff. We got to give you speech classes. Now get that voice out of you. You are not a woman. We got to work on you. Are y'all listening to me? We want people whole. 
That's the goal. Not to save. Hallelujah. You got to cast that devil out. Get that man walking straight. Put him in a, in a church. And don't put him in a choir till he gets rid of that twitch. See, I'm bold enough to tell you that. Some people are preaching probably would never tell you that. I'm going to tell you that. Until he gets rid of the, hey, sit down. Get your Bible. Okay? We're going to deal with you. Oh, I'm bold enough to tell it to you. I want you whole, not just healed. I want you whole. The Bible says he rebuked the demon. He healed the child. Wow. And, part three, delivered him again to his father. Notice he didn't deliver him back to the father. So, A, he dealt with that demon. B, let me heal him first. See, ladies, are you listening? Your husband just got out of prison. He's been locked up for 10 years, and you want him to come straight home? Jesus is saying, um, let me heal him first. Otherwise, he's going to come back to prison for another 10 years. You're going to be crying to me again. I don't know who that's for. Let me heal him. Don't be, baby, let me heal him. I'll let him visit you on weekends, saith the Lord. I'll let him come home on the weekend and see you. Let me heal him. Y'all better get a revelation today. Glory to God. Let me get this man straight before I send him back to that house around your children. He's not ready yet. Yes, I delivered him from prison. Yes, he's healed. Yes, he's filled with the Holy Ghost. But let me deal with him. Let me work on him and get that man right for you, baby. I'll send him back delivered. Oh, God. When I get him back to you, he'll be right. But let me heal him. Oh, God. Are you getting a revelation of this today? You got somebody that was bound by uh, opioids. You know, I used to be on drugs. I know what I'm talking about. Let me, can I share this with you as we close up? <sighs> when I got myself together, by the grace of God, I'm talking about initially, when I got my foot in the door, walking with God, he still had to clean up a lot of mess. Because remember, I was homeless. I used to be a thief. Folks, listen to me. I robbed so many people, I can't even count them. I burglarized so many places, houses, businesses. I can't, folks, I can't even count how many people I've robbed or, or stole from. I can't tell you how many people I defrauded. I'm talking about only God knows the exact number of people. I can't tell you how many crack houses I've been in, who, how many jails, how many times I've been before a judge, police officers, been in handcuffs and back of the paddy wagon, somebody's crack house, walking the street three, four, five o'clock in the morning. I can't even tell you how many times, how many people that I've crossed, how many times people have died around me. I can't even tell you, okay? But that stuff affects you. And I remember when I gave my life back to God and I joined the church, I was walking around in the church paranoid. I didn't trust those folk around me. I'm, folk, people dancing, shouting, talking in tongues, preaching. I didn't trust you for nothing. Are you kidding me? I thought you were like them folk that I just got off the street with, man. My mind was still gone. Jesus had to make me whole. He had to heal my mind. Yeah. He had to get my thinking straight, y'all. I was jacked up. I was like a soldier that had come back from the war. And now you put me back into society. There's this like post-traumatic uh, stress syndrome and stuff going on with me. You got to help me. Folks, you need to let Jesus heal you. Make you whole. Not just deliver you and get you off nicotine. You need to be just more than just get off the nicotine. We need to deal with this cancer that I let in my body because I was using nicotine. Are y'all listening to me? There's a lot of stuff we have to deal with. If you were an alcoholic for 15 years and then you got born again, we need Jesus to heal your liver. <laughs> yeah. Oh, watch this. The good news is he can do it. No problem for him. See? But we need to make you whole. That's the goal. Say that with me. My goal is to be made whole. Say it again. My goal is to be made whole. Say it again. My goal is to be made whole, man. I want everything that Jesus has for me. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And there's a conjunction. It connects what he was about to say to what he just said. Life has to be abundant. Otherwise, you're just like everybody else. Okay? Just like everybody else in the world. You're stressed out like they are. You have eight medications like they do. You have three wives already. Or five husbands or three girlfriends on the side like everybody else. There's no difference. That's called life. I'm alive. Okay, so what? 
I want abundant life. Glory to God. When someone comes to me, wants prayer, I need to be have some power available for them. When a bill comes in the mail, no problem. I need to be able to write the check and just pay for the thing. Okay? I want abundant life, man. When gas goes up to $5 a gallon, I don't have to cry. I want to be able to pull out my car, swipe, fill it up, Jack. Okay? I want abundant life. I want to be able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Cast out devil. Speak with new tongues. Give a message in tongues and interpret the thing. Prophesy, edify, comfort, exhort, build people up. You invite me to your church. I should be able to go there with a message, edify, build, comfort, build up, get people saved, heal and delivered. I want want abundant life. And then go home, be able to make love to my wife, and she's satisfied. Get up, be able to pay the gardener. The money's there to pay the guy that does the lawn. I want an abundant life. Are y'all listening to me? I want to be made whole. I want Jesus in every part of my life, from the bedroom to the church house. Oh, God. From the bank (laughs) <laughs> to my business. I want him involved. I want to be made whole. Time out for playing church. Adios, amigos. You do not impress me with that stuff. That means absolutely nothing. We want abundant life. People should be looking at us. I'm talking about the church. They should be looking at us the same way they did in the book of Acts. Remember, the Bible says the people, the people magnified them. Some people, the Bible says, let me get that scripture. The apostle's not here. Let me read this for you. This is what we want, y'all. No one play no games. Are you kidding me? This is my last scripture. The apostle <laughs> Where is that scripture, man? Man, there was a scripture on here that was so powerful. I think it's in here. Uh, Gospel of uh, Acts. Book of Acts. Oh, God, where, are the, where is that, Lord? Jesus. Okay, here it goes. Uh, chapter 5, Book of Acts. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest, durst, D-U-R-S-T, literally means uh, 4B. Let me go look at that. Dared. They dared not. No man join himself to them. But the people magnified them. Man, the people look like, man, those people got power over there. They didn't want to play. If you came up in that church playing games, you can drop dead. Yeah, they didn't play. There's so much power flowing. That's who we want. Where people look at us and will magnify us. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm getting loud. Okay. I'm done. I'm sorry. Okay. (laughs) All right, y'all. I have to. uh, We're going to stop right here. My time's gone anyway. Praise God. We give God praise, thanksgiving, and honor for the privilege and opportunity that we had uh, to share with you a living word from God. Y'all, y'all forgive me, I had to whisper for a little bit. <laughs> the office door opened up, and I didn't know if I was too loud for the studio. But anyway, th- did y'all see what I was saying in the, in the book of Acts? I'm done. I think I'm back tomorrow, right, Apostle Mays? Yes, sir. What time am I back tomorrow? I'm, I'm back. Uh, uh, y'all, I'm back again. All right. We've been all preaching right. all week long, y'all. The devil's having a fit, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if you're not living a life of love, you are simply not living yet. Hey, that word was tight, but it's right, y'all. Get in there and ask God to deal with you on it. Whatever was wrong that you need to fix, just fix it. The good news is Jesus Christ can make you whole. It doesn't matter if you're struggling with sexual addictions, homosexuality, lesbianism, drug addiction, opioids. If you're depressed, if you feel like committing suicide, folks, you can get help. What's the phone number, Dr. May? For this office. Why don't y'all call if there's anybody that's suffering, you need quick prayer. I'll stick around the studio just for a minute. Do we have a number for the studio? Where's that number? 301-836-5570. Did y'all get that? 301-836-5570. I'll sit around and wait for you. 836-5570. 301 836-5570. Eight three six five five seven zero. I'll stick around. If you need prayer, I'll pray for you. Don't commit suicide. Don't commit no terrorist act. You feel like killing people and shooting. Don't just stop right where you are. Pick up the phone. You probably have a cell phone anyway. Let me pray for you. Okay. 301-836-5570. Let me pray for you. I promise you, Jesus will visit you right where you are. And then you don't have to go to jail and you don't have to kill yourself or you have to hurt anybody. You can come off of opioids. Okay. In Jesus' name, 
836-5570. Dr. Mays, you want to come back? I'll stick yes, around sir. just for a little while, y'all, just in case anybody wants to call in. Praise the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. You've been listening to none other than the Kingdom Seekers broadcast with that great man of God, great and awesome man of God, Dr. Garen Gatlin, sold out, committed to Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Jesus is Lord. And I'm telling you, there's a word.